Hi. I can see the green and yellow bin. <laughs> That's weird. Different angle. It's one o'clock. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, can you just let me know if you can hear me? Because I was having problems with my mic earlier on. So give me those thumbs up if you can hear me now loud and clear. Hi. <laughs> You're here. Hi, Becky. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to basically explain a bit about what we'll be doing today. So first of all, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you. Right. So um, today is the second part of the sew along. Um, today is probably going to be the longest session um, so if you need to leave just leave and if it means that I'm left with one person watching that's fine but you can watch the video back whenever you want to and stop and start and just basically carry on sewing after I've done this live. I don't expect you to sew along with me while I'm doing this because I probably will go quite fast in certain areas and in retrospect is I've already done quite a bit of prep so I'm going to be basically making one side of the bag today because I've practically made the other side of the bag ready for next week's show so hi everybody right so um any questions you need to ask um I probably won't see them clearly today but um just ask the questions and I will after straight after the show hop onto the computer and answer any other questions so yeah let's start right so in the pattern I'm going to be doing pages four five six seven eight nine and half a ten today so hence why it's going to be a long session so we're going to concentrate making the outer front slip pockets the main front and back bodies how I attach the fusible fleece but I will talk about um we'll talk about how to add foam because some people have been messaging me can I use foam yes you can so I'm not going shopping you did say <laughs> you can go shopping afterwards um so yeah so I'm going to show you how to fuse fusible fleece because some people are saying oh it wrinkles and stuff like that so I'll talk to you on my techniques of doing fusible fleece because yeah I do get wrinkles but there is a few tricks that you can do when you actually um when you actually uh, iron it on to get rid of those those crinkles and it's called best press right so um which you can probably see in the background there already um so yeah, I'm just going to go straight into it. Like I say, any questions, pop them down below. I'll answer as much as I can. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. <clears throat> if you haven't got a copy of the pattern, there's a free download within the group, which you need to go into the files, um, the file section, and just click download. Download it onto your computer or your tablet. You Good thing about this pattern, there's no templates. So you can actually keep it on your computer and just run the instructions off your computer. Or if you're like some of the people that are too frightened of downloading the um, instructions and stuff like that, you can buy a hard copy. I know it's back to front, sorry. Um, you can buy a hard copy from the shop and I would leave the link to the hard copy within the, um, sh within the description after the show. Also today, I'm also going to be showing you how to put Chicago screws, which is like the rivets um, in your handles. If you, um, for any chance, miss what I'm saying in this video, there is an in-depth video that I've uploaded this week. Hi, hi. Um, uh, into the um, 
YouTube and I will drop a link into the description as well of how to um, add Chicago screws. I'm getting better at saying that Chicago screws. Right, so first of all, we're going to start off making the outer slip pockets. So like last week's show, I'm using the same outer as well as my lining and um, I've interfaced both pieces. Um, so you need to pop those right sides together. So making sure your diagonal of your print is going the right way. So I'm going to bring the camera down now so you guys can see what I'm actually going to be doing. Right. So you're going to lay... Da -da -da -da. There you go. I'm going to lay one piece down and then the other piece right sides together making sure the print is going the correct way and I'm just going to pin the top or in my case clips right Right, so the thread that I'm using is, I'm using the yellow version, but I'm using Gutemann thread. It's the Sew All thread. And the needles that I've got in my machine, because there is going to be a few bulky areas, and most machines will need, will need a size 16 in. So if you can find or buy a size 16 needle, it means that you won't have problems while you're sewing. Um, so I'm going to sew along this top edge all the way across. At this point, a bit like quilting, you don't need to reverse stitch at the start and at the end because it will be locked within your side seams anyway. And the stitch, the seam allowance is three eighths of an inch, which is one centimetre. And I'm using a standard stitch length of um, a 2.4. In the comments below, drop if you're having any problems with cutting out, if you're um, not understanding the instructions, um, just to, so I can keep an eye on people that are struggling, because there has been a few people, and bless them, they have messaged me, so I don't want people to sit there and get lost and stuff, and within the pattern, that's not what it's there for. It's there to be an easy, easy ride. Right, so with this, now I've sewn, sewn it together. I'm going to open it up, take it to my ironing board. Hi. I take it to my ironing board. You'll notice on my ironing board, I've got my um, wool mat. The wool mat basically saves you time when you're sewing. So I've got it on my ironing board at the moment because my wood that I had underneath it was getting warped. So I've got to find a way that this will stop the wood from warping because my table, the um, laminate on the table was peeling off in certain areas because some of the steam obviously was going all the way through. So at the moment I've got it on my ironing board. So to, open, to press it open... A bit like quilting, press the seam to one one area. Then you fold it, roll the top, so you roll in the top here, and then we're just going to press that again. Oh, stop spitting. Right, so 
they are amazing and the ones that I um, put the link to they're reasonably priced as well considering there is one brand that for that size it's 46 pounds well, this one was only about 12 or 13 so yeah it's a bit of a difference right so right so I'm sewing along here the top where the fold is one eighth of an inch away and I'm using a slightly longer top stitch of a three if you use making a PU version you will need to um, use a stitch length four but because mine's canvas well it's actually a linen um, I'm using a stitch length three comments below if you drop um in the comments below what part you're up to be um I'd, nice to see who's actually done their homework <laughs> right so the next step you need to do is get your main body piece so i'm using the yellow and then we're going to get the slip pocket and pop that onto the bottom part of that main outer body. So, but what I like to do is at this point, because I like perfection, is to make sure it's equal distance on both sides. So, as it stands, it's two and a half inches well just over two and a half inches and there you go now down the side here and down here I'm just going to drop some clips now you might find that your pocket might overhang on the sides don't worry about that we can trim that off at the later stage it should only overhang by like one eighth of an inch right so Ooh. right so now I'm going to sew just down this one side here and down this one side here and I'm going to reverse stitch at the top as well and then I'm then I'm going to sew across the bottom as well you're going to base stitch these into place within the seam allowance the, remember the seam allowance is one centimeter but I've got slightly a one eighth of an inch overhang on this side here so I'm compensating uh, compensating for that move on to the next row uh, next side And like you just saw I reverse stitched here right so now I'm just gonna sew the bottom edge you don't need to res reverse stitch this bit if you don't want to
Hi. <laughs> right, so now we have got the... Let's bring you up a bit. Right, now we've got the, the body and the pocket attached. This is where you need to decide whether you want to split it up into two pockets or whether you want to keep it as one pocket. Um, what you've got to bear in mind, if it's in one pocket, it won't be all one complete pocket because you'll lose a bit when it goes around the sides so it's depending on up to you um you'll need a rule in for the next section to make the two slip pockets so i'm going to do two slip pockets today so you actually get the idea of what to do so from this side here i'm going to measure in nine inches and make a mark and then I'll probably do a nine inch mark at the bottom as well and then match up those two nine inch two marks to know where my sewn line is so I'll do that now right so the trick is to make sure you've got it straight is to line up the top edge of your pocket to a, a marking on your ruler or rule um yeah because it's not a queen it's a rule yeah so in so it's best to find a marking within the actual um the rule and the top of the pocket and we're going nine inches now please most of you will probably laugh at this what stitch length um what stitch length right so stitch length because I'm top stitching here um I will be doing a stitch length three on here um right so but if you're generally sewing the whole bag together low you'll need to use a 2.4 or 2.5 depending on what your average stitch length is on your actual um on your machine Right, so many of you will know I'll start counting in a minute. Please don't laugh because <laughs> I don't want to get confused. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, so I've done my two marks. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm just going to right so I'm using a friction pen um I know there's black on my fabric and when I iron this away it will leave a white line but if I sew over that line correctly and don't come off that line um <laughs> free <laughs> I can't say it low. Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to ignore you in a minute, low. <laughs> um, I'm going to sew as neatly as I can over the drawn line. And then because when I iron it away, I won't see the white line because obviously. But my advice is really try your hardest not to use a friction pen, but it's the only marking tool I've got this end. Right, so I've drawn my sewing line, as you can uh, see, and I'm going to start from the top of the pocket, reverse my stitch about three or four times, and then sew all the way down to the bottom. And when you get to the bottom, you don't need to reverse stitch because we're going to lock that in anyway with the base. And I'm going to use a stitch length three low. <laughs> the reason why I'm reverse stitching quite a lot at the start is because when you use a slip pocket and you're quite forceful at putting in, it stops it from ripping the, um, the back of the actual um, main body. Right, so I've just sewn that and you'll notice, if I can get quite close, I've gone over by one stitch. 
if you can try and do that that means the pocket will take a bit more forcefulness if you overfill it and stuff so I'm just going to cut the thread off and give that a bit of a press So now that's complete, let's get you up a bit, there you go, now that's complete, I'm going to move on to the base part, so I'm going to put that there for a minute. Now the base, I'm using a PU, um, a soft PU, it's actually left over from sewing quarter, and I've interfaced it with now, I can't get buckram at the moment, and a lot of people will know that I talk about buckram quite a lot, but there is, Tanya actually does something called a cotton woven iron-on. It's actually quite close to the lightweight buckram, so I will drop a link to that within her shop, and basically it's it's the same and that's what I've used on this it's near enough the same it's the same thickness as buckram just slightly thinner and to be fair it works exactly the same so as she can't get buckram at the moment my advice is to buy the woven one from her as long as it's the woven one or it could be just normal medium weight iron on non-woven as well right so in the book so we've moved on to page five now it's going to be back to front sorry <laughs> um i just tell you to cut out the mark the corners and um basically to cut them out so you need your rule and then what you tend to do is work out your two inch squares in both corners and then we're going to trim those out. Could you use H640? Um, H640 is also used within the pattern. I will be coming over to H640 in a, in a short while. H6, um, H640 is a have what they class as a heavy stabiliser um, and it gives you the body of the bag. The buckram is an actual interfacing. The, there is a bit of a difference. Um, buckram is to make your fabric last. H640 is to make your bag be a structure, basically. So you can. I will be using H640, and I will show you the H640 in a bit. So I'm just going to cut those out. You could do this with a rotary cutter and cut the other one out. Bin them. All right, so you're left with a squashed mushroom um, or a tea or a push button, I don't know. So yeah, you're left with a T-shaped mushroom shape kind of thing. Yeah, so <laughs> we're going to get your pocket and your main body and I'll drop the camera back down. Right, so yeah, um, Lisa Lam, you are correct. Yeah, you can use um, the uh, 700 10 woven um, visaline or violin or whatever I can't pronounce it but yeah you can use that as well right so you're going to work from the base here and then you're going to flip this over and you're going to match up so you're going to keep the 
the triangle the corner cutouts pointing upwards towards the top of the bag and you're going to match up the two edges and clip those into place Right, so I'm now going to turn this around and stitch um, three, eighths of an uh, three eighths of an inch or one centimetre seam allowance here and I'm going to put my stitch length at four, uh, three point f no, 2.4 inch and I am going to reverse stitch at this point. Right, because some people say, um, because some people say, oh, you can't reverse stitch on PU. You can't reverse stitch on PU when you haven't interfaced it. If you've interfaced it, you can reverse stitch because you've added that extra stable, stabled side to it. So I'm just pointing that out because I've had quite a few conversations over the last few weeks um, saying, oh, but you've reverse stitched over PU. You can reverse stitch. When you're top stitching, though, my advice is to only um, reverse stitch if you know that needle's going to go straight in the holes that it's already produced. If not, then if you think that it's not going to reverse stitch through those back those holes that you've already produced my advice is to cut your thread long and tie it off right so we're going to open up this so at this point at this point if you're using a woven base because i know some people have selected woven fabric you will want to take it to your iron and press it open but you've got to make sure this seam here is pointing down as I'm using PU, you won't need to um, you won't need to basically um, iron it. But what we will do is give it a good hand press and finger press, making sure that seam is still pointing down. Now I'm going to um, I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from where this this actual um, base joins the bag. And because I'm using PU, I'm going to take my stitch length up to a four millimeter. If you're using a woven, if you're using a woven, I advise you to use um, only a stitch length three or a stitch length three and a half. And you don't need to reverse stitch because it'll be locked in the side seams anyway. And every so often I'm just going to lift it up to make sure the, the seam is pointing the correct way. So can I just ask a question? Can I just ask a question? Can you hear that music? Because oh, we've got a problem with our neighbour upstairs and is now just put on his music really loud. 
so yeah um right so i've now top stitched all the way across and now we're just going to pop this complete section to one side and we are going to move over to the fusible fleece no thank you christine that's fine that's why i've got one of these mics because i'm so scared that you can hear his music um yeah he's a young bloke so yeah <laughs> right thanks no no can't hear music thank you guys right so the next thing i advise you to do is to get your not until i mentioned it sorry <laughs> right um then i do apologize about the music if you can hear it um right so the next thing you need to do is get your woven um fusible fleece i'm using a size 16 um needle um and advise most bag making to use a size 16 unless it's a really thin fabric and thin fibered use a size 14 um needle but um, a size 16 jean or leather needle will be strong enough for bag making um <laughs> time to learn voodoo yeah i know i was just thinking that myself yeah <laughs> right so with the fusible fleece you need to cut out those corners like we did before so i'm just going to pop the camera down so you can see what i'm doing next so <laughs> right so we're going to cut this out first and we're going to do the other one now these squares that you're cutting out of the fusible fleece you can um, save these for later because or in other bags because if you have to put a magnetic clasp in or something you can use this as a backing for where the washer goes over so don't chuck the fusible fleece or the foam pieces out um, because they do come in handy in the long run so the next thing I ask you to do is if I just bring you back up Right, the next thing I ask you to do is round the fusible fleece, what we've just cut out the squares, we need to also trim all the way around, including those squares again, cutting back quarter of a, just over a quarter of an inch all the way around. And what will happen is you'll be, when you fuse your fusible fleece on, you'll have fabric showing all the way around and this will help bulky seams. Now, the people that are using, um, foam if you're using fusible foam like bosal um, and it's fusible on one side cut the um cut it exactly as the pattern is describing for um fusible fleece if you're using sewing foam you'll need to baste sew it onto the fabric um, the fabric onto the actual foam first so what i'm going to do after the um video has gone live I'm going to drop a picture within the Facebook group and it's going to have all the instructions of how to actually cut out the foam, make it bigger than the actual panel and how to trim it all the way back and I'm going to put the instructions um, on the actual screen for you rather than me talking through it. But what will actually happen is once you've sewn the foam on you'll like end up cutting it back to the seam allowance here anyway. So yeah, so I haven't forgotten about the foam people, like the people that have brought the foam, um, at the sewing foam, I will actually um, put all the information on how to apply the foam at, later on today in the, the group. So, so as I've cut everything, the pommy squares, the, the boxy corners out, here I'm just going to go round trimming a quarter of an inch all the way around so or close to a quarter of an inch I 
and where the, the corner is, I'm doing a quarter of an inch around that as well. And on the baseline. You need to do this because it will definitely cut down the bulky areas. Also means there won't be any tears or crying when your machine can't sew over certain parts at the very end. So you must eliminate this extra bulk here. Might look a waste, but it isn't a waste once you've got a nice, nice finished bag at the end of it. And the top. Now for those people that got industrial machines, um, you really don't need to trim the seam allowance back. But for those people that got domestic, I advise you to trim it back. So the next thing you will do is get your iron on a high setting. Fill it up with water and make sure your steam's on. Because I've noticed with fusible fleece and um, like the Bosal single, side, single sided fusible, you will need a lot of steam. You'll also need a pressing cloth. So I've used an old tea towel, but I like this one because it's got birds on it. Um, so it's a cotton tea towel. So you just need some cotton fabric. That will come your pressing cloth and basically something that's got a bit of tech, a bit of weight to it as well. If you can't do steam from your actual iron, you can wet this, and I don't mean drench it, I mean just spritz it with water. Or you can spritz the fusible fleece when you actually come to fuse it onto your actual um, uh, bag body. So if I get to the next point. So I'm not going to fuse all of this because it does take at least 15 10 to 15 minutes to do this but what you will do is lay your body piece wrong side facing up your fusible fleece <clears throat> which is your glue side facing down and what you need to do is central it up so there is <clears throat> a, an edge all the way around going all the way around making sure it's in the center and then, if I move over to the piece that I've prepped for you, I've started fusing the fusible fleece onto this to save time. I'm just going to carry on doing the top part to show you how to fuse fusible fleece. So, you obviously got it on your board. At this point, you can spritz it if you want to, or you can use the steam out your actual iron you pop your tea towel or your pressing cloth on top make sure your irons at full full which is your cotton and your steam but this also de also depends on which manufacturers and um, fusible fleece you're using I know heat and bond needs a lower heat than h640 but as I'm using h640 I've got it on a high steam and basically you just hold it you don't rub like you're ironing a man's shirt or yeah that's the only thing I do iron a man's shirt so you're just holding it there and and you will have to keep going over the area so I'm holding it for about 15 seconds ish um, just making sure now if you're like me I do have a press um, but obviously not at my apartment um, a press you can set the timer set the um, func uh, set the function that you need but you will need still need a pressing cloth and I'm just going to go around again 
as you can see there's a lot of steam coming off or I don't know if you can see the steam but there is a lot of steam coming off um, and basically you just need to keep moving it around and then to check to make sure it's fused on what I tend to do is I notice it hasn't healed here but I just run my fingers along to see if it's fused on so I've just got that corner to do and you will do this for all both body pieces So you should have it not peeling off anywhere now. Now, so if you get creases here, I haven't because I've noticed I don't get much creases now with uh, a wool mat when I'm fusing fusible fleece. But if you do get any creases, what I tend to do is get best press, doesn't matter what flavour or what smell, and I just spray a little bit over it. Oh, it's a mild starch, um, so it's not going to damage your iron. And I'm just, I run the iron over the top, and it generally does get out those creases. And there'll be no creases so so yeah so if you are getting creases just run a bit of press press or if you've got no starch um, just a bit of water over the top um, a spray bottle a light spray bottle and you can do that right so what you'll notice is if I peel this back now you've got a crease mark here and here that's come a marking tool for when we have um, when we actually put the um the handles onto the actual bag right so i'm going to move on to making a handle <laughs> right to make a handle you obviously got your handle strip and you need to fuse interfacing onto the back. So I've used um, lightweight woven interfacing and I'm using a PU. If you're using a woven, what you will do is um, on the wrong, to the wrong side, um, press, press like you're making binding and then fold it over, press it again to get the creases that you need for the, um, the next steps. As for as I'm using um, PU, I've had to do some markings. So you need to find the centre mark of your handle. And we are on the page seven now. Yeah, we've start start of end of six going on to seven in your actual pattern. Now I'm going to use quilters tape because I'm using PU, but you don't need to use um, quilters tape if you're um, using a woven, a woven fabric because you would have already pressed this and it would have stayed into shape. So I'm going to pop the camera down. So either side of these mark, these this line, top and bottom, I'm just going to run quilters tape along all the way across. same again on this side right okay and then 
what the next bit is that I'm going to do is peel off just one of those backing tapes all the way and then I'm going to bring this bottom edge to that centre mark and stick it into place. Now what you might find is it will might want to come off because it is only a light sticky tape so you'll need some quilters clips and just put some quilters clips as you go along. So I've run quilters, um, I've put clips all the way down here. Right, so, and then I'm just going to flip it over. And peel off the backing tape of this one. And repeat the same process. And obviously put some clips into place here. to an end here right so at the moment you've got a wrong side and a right side so the wrong side is where the center bit is where we meet the the two two edges together so the next bit is on the right right side Let's just move that down a bit. On the right side, we need to fold it up upon itself. So it's right side to right side and clip this end here. So you should have a fold, the fold on, I mean, the center crease or the, um, the center mark on the fold on the one side. And then you will have the two folds join in here. Um, they can they can mark Margaret, um, but if you're if you don't leave them in overnight, they won't mark. Um, and if you're quick at using them, so if you do a handle at a time, um, they won't they won't mark. Um, if they do mark, is down below here. I've got a hairdryer um, a hairdryer in my drawer, and I just run some heat over over this area and massage it and that's when you'll find that these clip marks because they do have little bumps on them um they will actually disappear over um with you just massaging it while it's warm right so back to the strap um so now i folded it over this end bit here we are going to sew a quarter of an inch away from this short end across making sure you reverse stitch at the start and at the end we're going to do that for both ends so if i just do the process that we did before fold it right sides together and clip it there so we are going to sew across this part here and using a, a stitch length of a three or a actually I'm going to use a stitch length 2.7 on my machine because it does do a large stitch length and we were only sewing a quarter of an inch away from the um from the edge and 
and then we're just going to repeat it for the other end. Yeah, the hairdryer trick is a really good trick, especially with some of the American vinyls that you can get. Like, you can get a really glossy, shiny vinyls, and these clips do mark them quite drastically. And it took me years to figure out how to get rid of it, and it was the hairdryer trick that got rid of the marks. Okay, so I've sewn those ends now going to trim off the excess threads and then what we're going to do is we are going to trim as much as that excess off as we can and we are going to taper it in at an angle on each side you're going to leave around about one eighth of an inch here and we're going to do that for both ends. Right, so the next thing you need to do is get something pokey-ish, but not sharp on the end. So I've got these weird tweezers that I use with my Cricut, um, and they're not pointy at the end but you can use like a chopstick or something and then the next thing is we need to turn this part the right side facing out the reason why we've done this line here is so we have a neat finished edge so um you need your finger and your thumb so you put your finger inside inside the actual um the corner and then just poke it out and then you get your pokey tool and push that out. You roll the edge as much as you can. And at this point, if you've used woven fabric, you can give that bit of a press. So I'll do that again on this side. Um, push it out and poke out that corner. So the next thing you need to do is you'll notice that it's naturally starting to fold it together. So you end up with a neat fold on this side, a neat fold on the ends, and your two folds neat on this one side. You just basically clip those as you go along. And keep doing that. And keep going and you do that all the way down the end that you've um, got left open so with the strap you will be top stitching now I will be top stitching um, on a four millimeter because I'm using PU but if you're using a woven you only need to use like a three or a 3.5 when you top stitch you need to start on the clipped clip side as close as you can to where the end is because if you don't start on this end and you start on the end that has no clips um, you will find when you come to come into the close to the end of this row here which is the one with the clips you will find that it will be um, creased and you will have to unpick it and obviously with PU, you try your hardest not to um, unpick as much as you can. So always start at the top of the clipped side and um, basically um, on the side closest to the, um, the top part. So I'm not going to top stitch this because I've pre-done one like Blue Peter style. So as you can see, I've top stitched all the way around and you can see where I actually started off here so I started off here and did a couple of reef um, stitches to reverse here I've done that to basically cut down 
um, speed, uh, time. I'm just going to take my clips off though to stop it from marking. Right, so now I've done this. <laughs> now I've done this, we will need to pop it onto the bag. So in the instructions, so we're going on to page um, eight. Get in there. So on page eight, I tell you to measure in from the top of the pocket here in to five inches and then we need to measure from the top of the pocket down one and a half inches so I end up using two quilters rolls so I end up using this one and my little trusty one and I'll show you how to work that out basically So at the end of your, um, what's it called, um, your handles, you need to run some tape, some quilters tape at the ends. And you probably only need an inch or an inch and a half. And here. Okay. And then you're just going to pop that to one side for a minute. Now we're going to measure in five inches from this side here. And we're going to measure in. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Right, so that's five inches in. Yep. Five inches in. And then we're going to peel off the backing tape of one of the handle ends. And then we are going to pop this in, but we're not going to stick it down yet. And we're going to butt it up against this side of the roll. And then I'm going one and a half inches down from the pocket top, which is one and a half. And then I'm just going to pop my quarter, extra quarter roll down, and that will stop me from actually pushing down the handle any further then I'm just going to stick that handle into place da -da 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 -da. yep and then I'm just going to do the same for the other side so to stop this handle from moving around we're just going to pop a clip either side at the top right so same again measuring five inches one two three four five and we're going to peel off that back in now, so you've got to make sure your handle is in a U shape and there is no twists. We're going to pop the handle inside around the one and a half inch mark. We're going to pop that roll on top and make sure that it's correct. Stick that into place. Pop a clip into place. Right, so I thought I got that stuck then. So now I've got my handle into place. So from the top top of the bag here, we need to measure down. Sorry, I always forget this one measurement. Yeah, so you need to measure down one and a half inches and mark. Right, so I've used PU here. So I am going to use a friction pen. But you can use a, um, a creasing tool, if I've got one here. Yep. So you can use a creasing tool. So you can measure one and a half inches down from the top and run a creasing tool over it. So that will make a creasing mark. And that's where you know where the sewn line will be. 
or in this case I'm just going to run my friction pen over it because it's black and black you wouldn't have to do that if it's not black right. okay so I have two mark lines so the next step is from I don't know right let's bring it up right from the next step is we will start sewing inside pull down this line in here and we will start sewing where we have done the sewn line on the handle and we will sew across the bottom up the long side to where that sewn line is across and down again and we're just generating some boxes um, but these will be rectangles um, if you're not doing Chicago screws or rivets my advice is within that rectangle to do an X that will help with um, heaviness and stuff like that but if you are doing um, Chicago screws and um, rivets you will need not need to do the um, the X because if when we punch the hole you'll you might go through the X so if I put you down there you go so starting off with peeling back my pocket as much as I can dropping my needle into where my stitch line is and I'm using a large stitch length of four because I'm using PU if you're using woven um, for your handle you won't need to use a four you can use a three and I will be back stitching at this point pivoting at the corners and stitch across and stitching up to that where that mark is that I made and pivot across that and down to meet where you started at so I'll just repeat that same process for the other handle take those out so I'm starting below the pocket so it hides where I'm reversing reverse stitch at the start and at the end Lift up that foot when you come to pivot. Now I won't be keeping this bag. I'm going to do a holder giveaway so someone can have this bag after I've completed it out after the four week process. So, and there will be, um, a random question but I've got to figure out what that random question is because I can't keep every bag that I make I just haven't got the space <laughs> right so as you can see I've done the the box and it's really robust so the next thing you need to do is if you're not doing Chicago screws you need to do the cross um, if you're not doing the um, if you're not doing rivets you need to do a cross I advise uh, and I can't say it's stress it enough you need to do the cross we are doing the Chicago screws now with the Chicago screws I have given a measurement so from that sewn line I'm measuring down half an inch 
say I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I like them to both to be in the neatest part, uh, neat, and basically the same distance on each, and they're not crooked or anything. So this time I'm just going to use an ordinary biro and just going to drop a mark. So I'll measure down half an inch from that sewn line and because my handles are an inch wide I'm measuring in from one of the sides half an inch and just chucking two, two marks down. Now you might see these and uh, yeah you can just see them so the next thing you need to do is now you need to use a hole punch like I say I will drop a disc um, in the description um, on how to set um, Chicago screws in depth video that I filmed earlier on in the week I've you I'm using prim um, prim hole punch but you can use a hammer with a punch. Um, there is leather punches out there. I can do a bit of an in-depth list um, of where to buy them from the UK. If you're from overseas, I can give you the word in that you need to type in to the Google and um, to the Google. <laughs> I sound like my mom to the Google. Um, you need to type into Google and search to where they actually are. So I now need to punch those holes for where I actually made those marks now I'm only setting one today um, I'll set the rest off camera so yeah I've punched a hole there and it's gone all the way through I'll just put the clip on. Now I'm using Emmeline um, Chicago screws. I'm using the 3 8 by 3 16 um, small ones. So your okay. So whoa you get two pieces. So one's flat uh, so one's flat and one's got a like a, a cross on it one the flat one has a barrel which has got a hole in it and the one with the cross is actually a screw so this flat one will end up being what will go on the outside the screw one is what you um, will actually do um, tighten up on the back of the bag so I'm finding my hole punch isn't actually big enough for the barrels that the Emmeline um, Chicago screws have so what I have to do is do an extra step on these holes now you got to do it little bit by little bit get your knee sharp scissors in and just cut a little cross I will show it to the camera in a minute this will help the barrel go in so if you can see I've just cut a little bit more into those that hole you're going to get the the barrel and pop that so the barrel goes in and you really do have to move around the fabric a bit and then flip it over see with the video that I've put in on YouTube it's an overhead camera but I can't do the overhead camera on the live at the moment so you're going to pop the screw into that hole at the back and get your screwdriver from your sewing machine because it fits and just pop that screw in and tighten it up now if you know you're never ever going to rip the bag apart to nick the hardware for the next bag you might want to pop some super glue into the hole of the barrel 
and there you go you've got your rivet uh, your Chicago screw now if you're doing a rivet you will have a hammer and a setting tool and a set tool for and an anvil but if you're a beginner my advice is to just go with the Chicago screws to start off with they work exactly the same and they're so much easier to install because with rivets there is a habit if you haven't got the correct surface to hammer on you will find the barrel which your two clips of your rivets clipped together will bend um, or if you haven't got a press it will bend so my my if I'm not using my rivet press I'm always using Chicago screws because I know full well I cannot set a rivet by hand I, I put my hands up I've been doing it 10 years and I still can't do it I just don't know understand why so at this point you would have an extra do another rivet here uh, or a Chicago screw but to save time I will do that off camera so the next thing I want to add to the bag is, and this is on page 10 at the top, is to add my handmade um, tag. So this is actually one from Tanya's group because she had one specifically made with the Union Jack on for the British people and the Welsh flag for the Welsh if they wanted to. So it comes with a washer and it's got prongs on so I'm just going to take this washer off and I can <laughs> okay so you've got a washer you pop the washer to one side at the moment and the handmade tag now in the book I tell you a specific place to put put the actual handmade tag um, there's nothing stopping you putting it wherever you want on the bag, but I just like it to the... Sorry, I'm dyslexic and I don't know where left and right, so I put it to my right side because it's pleasing because when you are an artist or you read books, you read left to right and the way the eye draws, um, you start from the left when you look and you end up being to the right and that's how the eye actually works. So that's... Um, yeah, Chicago, I prefer Chicago screws. Nine times out of ten, Chicago screws is what I always tend to use. Um, apart from I have got a rivet press, but I cannot set rivets whatsoever, Lisa. I've tried. I, I really can't, can't set them by hand. So, yeah. Right, so. We're going to the top of page ten. I know this is going to be back to front and I do apologise. Um we're going to measure in on the base so we're going to measure in on the base on the right hand side obviously this might be your left on on your screens but from the right hand side we're going to measure in on this line here and we're going to measure in uh, three and a half inches so if I point the camera down Right, so right, so I'm going to measure in three and a half inches, and from the top line here, I'm going to measure half an inch down, and that's where my mark will be. So I'm just going to put one centre mark like I did before then the trick is depending on what style of washer some washers only have two slits on and some washers have um how many is on this six slits on your trick is you need to get your handmade sign and pop it into your washer and see where the prongs of these these are called the prongs will actually go into the washer and on this case it's the two end ones so what we will end up using is this bit here will be my center of the actual um the center of the washer so we where that center mark is where that center mark is we pop the washer over like so 
and my center of the washer is that bar in the middle and then making sure that is spot on I draw two lines either side where I know the actual um, prongs are going to go so as you can see um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it to be fair I've got two marks here so I'm going to get a um, seam ripper and just pop it in on the one part of the slit and just wiggle it down just a little. I'm not kidding, we aren't going that far down. And be careful, you can use a craft tool, craft knife if you want to, to be a bit more precise. And right. Then we're going to get the handmade tag, pop that back, and pop that in to those slits. Making sure it's as level as it can be. F flip this over, and you'll see them poking out either side. You get your washer. Right, so at this point, whatever bag you're making and you want to put one of these tags on if you've got no foam or fusible fleece those little squares of fu um, fusible fleece and foam you will need to actually cut some more slits into those and pop that over this, these prongs but because we've used fleece and foam you don't need to do that at this point so we're just going to pop that washer over Okay, push down the washer as far as it will go to the body and bend those prongs in or out depending on how you want to do it but I like to bend them in and then I go one step further is electrical tape or gaffer tape and it doesn't have to be the fancy ones that you get from likes of Hobbycraft the ones that have got like Disney Disney characters on it can be the black one because end up, you won't end up seeing this anyway and you just stick that over the top doing that will help um, stop the prongs rubbing onto the actual lining fabric and ripping the lining fabric so that bit's done right so you only need to do the handmade tag on the one side of the, the bottom of the bag but you'll need to do all the Chicago screws or the rivets on the handle so this is as far as we're going to get today so you've complete both sides of the bodies and then next week um, we will move on to um, popping them together sewing the bodies together and making the the bottom the boxy corners then we will also be doing the um, the zip closure, the main zip closure um, next week as well and the slip pockets. So yeah, I know it's been a long one and thanks for sticking along for those who have stuck along. If not, don't worry, you can keep watching this. This video will be in the group and I'll ping it to the top and I will answer any questions. I will also put a um a week two questions um helpful thing i will also pop in all the things that i've told you that i would pop up like the how to fuse um how to sew in your foam and stuff so yeah yeah thanks ever so much for watching and i'll see you all next week bye <laughs> mm,